Welcome back. Uh, I got some more comic reviews uh, for you. And let me just get right off to it. Don't have any major announcements or anything. Uh, first three are Batman related books. Uh, of course, the first is going to be uh, Batman 676. Uh, that's the first issue of R.I.P. Uh, okay, I loved it. Grant Morrison is terrific. Grant Morrison's been sort of, I don't know, been a little off and on with the past few issues setting this all up, and now finally we've gotten to it, and now we get pure 100% Grant Morrison. Um, we have this little cabal of creepy guys planning uh, some shit against Bruce Wayne. I think this is Maxi Zeus. Uh, I'm not too sure. And I don't know who these people are, so let's find out. Uh, great issue including the debut of a new Batmobile, which kind of looks like a Cadillac or something like that. I'm liking it. Uh, more stuff with Bruce Wayne actually getting laid. Uh, I don't remember the last time he's ever gotten sex, outside of the movies. Um, and um, hook it up with Jezebel Jet here. So we'll see what's going on. Robin, meanwhile, is worried that he's kind of flipping out. Uh, last issue, he was kind of giving these warnings to Nightwing, and he didn't seem to really, I don't know, be that interested, and Alfred also was kind of blowing him off, too. Um, but, um, Tim's a smart guy, so hopefully, hopefully everything will be alright. We'll see what's going on. Uh, and uh, the issue ends with a great creepy sequence with the Joker, um, who I think is being enlisted in this uh, little war. I like the new co the new costume that um, Grant Morrison's given him he's sort of this surgical gown or something like that really creepy and uh, I love it great work so far it's a little jumpy as usual with uh, Grant Morrison's superhero work so uh, may take a second read to kind of get everything uh, but uh, all in all five ramp chips great work uh, and the two Batman related books. Uh, Batman and the Outsiders, number seven. It's kind of more of a setup for the third act, which I assume will be the conclusion next issue. Uh, mainly we get uh, Metamorpho running around a space station, Batman setting up troops, uh, and uh, Batgirl sneaking around uh, in a Chinese army base with a sword. Very, very cool. And uh, let me do that for you there. I love that. Uh, I love, the, I think the next issue Batgirl's going to jump into the mix here uh, to rescue the friends, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, I uh, like it so far, although not too much in this issue, so I give it three ram chips. Now, this one I really wanted to talk about. This is Robin 174. Now, I don't normally buy Robin, but uh, this was the answer to who's the girl running around in the spoiler costume, and there's a spoiler for you. It's spoiler. Uh, Stephanie Brown is back in a big way. Uh, this is, by the way, written by Chuck Dixon, who created her in the first place. Let me tell you something. I'm really happy. I don't normally like when characters come back to life. I usually like dead to stay dead. Of course, no one ever stays dead. Jason Todd. But, you know what? This makes me happy. I thought uh, killing off Steffi was bullshit. I think it was really badly done. I think it was really negative and ugly. It also not only ruined a strong female character in the Batman universe by killing one off, but it ruined a second one, uh, Leslie Tompkins, who supposedly let her die to teach Batman a lesson. Uh, so that's two ruined in one uh, story. Uh, I didn't enjoy that, and I just thought it was a mistake. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's a mistake. And this is the thing. Some people have said every once in a while that uh, strong female characters are, are uh, beaten up and pushed aside and almost in a misogynistic way in the Batman books. And you know, sometimes I haven't really given that too much credence. But the uh, last couple of years I did kind of maybe feel that way with the uh, execution of Stephanie and uh, the way um, Cassandra Cain uh, Batgirl was turned into a villain in a very forced way. And... I'm really happy that both of these characters are back uh, because they're, they're characters that aren't really, they're not dressed up like strippers. They're not, I mean, they're, they're sexy characters, but not in an overt, sleazy, kind of Jim Lee kind of way. I mean, they really are 
who they are, and that they were both strong characters, and I'm very happy to have them back. Um, I probably won't be reading Robin. Um, I just read Robin during the crossovers, but I'm happy to see Stephanie back. And hopefully she can have a, a re uh, reunion with uh, Cassandra Kane. I really like the way those two played off each other. A uh, quick couple of notes. Justice League 20. Loved it. Great art. Uh, Flash is back in the team just in time for Final Crisis. Uh, let's see. It's uh, Van Skeeper, or however he's pronounced. He did the art in this issue. Very good. Uh, 21. Very nice work. Uh, the best part is the first scene between uh, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in their new meeting room, which looks like space, essentially. Uh, Superman count calls it the lounge. And uh, Batman's really funny. I don't know why Batman's so funny when the three of them together. I, he loves being a dick to him, and it's just, it's never not bad. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't give uh, stars here. Um, five stars for Robin. Great. Uh, the two Justice Leagues each, uh, three uh, Ram chips. Now, let's go to Buffy. Now, I have a friend who may see this, and she doesn't know what's going on, but uh, Buffy has a new person in her life. Meanwhile, she's invading Japan. Uh, and a great sequence with Dawn the Giant, possibly the best scene ever with Dawn. Uh, she's my least favorite character in the whole Buffy universe, uh, but she's very well used in this. Uh, Dracula also is back, and he is very funny in this story. I uh, enjoy a couple of one-liners from him, and uh, it's not bad. You know, you got uh, got uh, Buffy going to war with these Japanese vampires who have stolen the, uh, some of Dracula's powers. Uh, and uh, she is uh, going after them. At the same time, it turns out it might be, as Admiral Akbar might say, IT'S A TRAP! So, it's good so far. Uh, five ram chips. Good work. Uh, Daredevil, I'll make this short. Uh, good. Not bad. Good sum up of the Mr. Fear story and Mina story. She's locked up. Well, not locked up. She's uh, taken some time off in a uh, mental ward. Uh, because her brain was really fucked up by Mr. Fear's uh, fear gas or whatever the hell he did to her. Um, not a bad sum up. Uh, I hope the series gets better, but three ram chips. Uh, and Transformers! Uh, issue six of Devastation. Uh, pretty good exciting battle. Starscream is back. Uh, the art's just as good as it usually is. They've been used, this story has been involving the Headmasters, which is one of the dumbest things in the Transformers lore, uh, essentially for those of you who don't know. Uh, the Headmasters are Transformers whose heads transform into people who became cyborgs to be their heads. I don't know why the hell anybody would want this, uh, but the way it's been done in this is better, because it's done in a in a creepy way on purpose uh, for these people who, these earthbound people who want to uh, capture the power of the Transformers, so they willingly do this to themselves, capture a few Transformers and force them to have their heads be them. Uh, anyway, it's really, it's pretty good. Uh, it's not as good as the previous uh, miniseries, which was called Escalation, uh, but I still like this one. It's, I'd say, maybe four Ram chips out of five. Not bad. Anyway, that about do it for here. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. I'm looking forward to um, more Secret Invasion. And we'll uh, see what's coming up.